Now let's move on and really discuss those criteria. There's four criteria uh, that the early church used to decide whether a book uh, should be considered part of the canon or not. And what's interesting about this is if you look at different sources, uh, different historical sources, there will be a a little bit of variation uh, depending on the writer about Uh, which criteria were used, but they usually coalesce around certain themes. And what I want to mention is, as much as I uh, do not care for the trajectory and the um, things that uh, Bart Ehrman has done, he is not a, a, a friend of conservative Christianity. Even he recognizes some of these criteria that they used. And in his book, uh, Lost Christianities, which, again, I'm not really going to recommend to you uh, because it's so slanted, but even he has to come and recognize, as a historian, uh, that they did have uh, at least four of these criteria. And I'm going to mention to you uh, the criteria right now. One is the book had to be ancient. And this is something that um, it's not unique to Bart Ehrman if you were to look at Greg Allison's historical theology, he mentions this too. They wanted to know, so like in the second, third century, when they're looking, they're trying to decide which books belong. They want to know and make sure that the book is ancient. It goes back to the time of the apostles. Uh, Secondly, they wanted to know that it was apostolic. What do I mean by that? It was either written by an apostle or was someone closely associated with an apostle. So Matthew, that's written by an apostle, that's in. John, that's written by an apostle, that's in. Uh, The 13 epistles, or 14 epistles, 13 or 14 epistles, depending on how you count Hebrews, uh, those were in uh, because they were written by an apostle. We'll come to Hebrews in a little bit. That one was disputed because they questioned, was it really written by Paul? Uh, And again... You can look at somebody on the conservative end, like Greg Allison. He's going to acknowledge the same thing as Bart Ehrman here. Because, in other words, what I'm trying to say is these aren't categories that a conservative scholar cooked up. This is actually what they looked for in the early church. So the 27 books that we have now were either written by apostles or were closely associated with apostolic men. So Mark, uh, we are told by our earliest sources that he received his information from Peter. Luke was a traveling companion of Paul. Um, And these other epistles, we have epistles from John and Peter. They all bear apostolic um, testimony in them. So they were either written by an apostle or men closely associated with apostles. They wanted to look and make sure that the book was thirdly, Catholic. And by Catholic, I don't mean Roman Catholic. I don't mean the Pope. I don't mean any of that. I mean universal. That is, that it was being used not just in Antioch, but it was being used in North Africa and and, uh, in in Italy. It was being used all over the Mediterranean world. Wherever Christianity had spread, they wanted to know that that book was being widely used and not just used in one uh, narrow geographical area. Fourthly, Uh, They wanted to make sure that the book was orthodox. And again, by orthodox, I don't mean Greek orthodox. I mean that it uh, lined up with the teachings that the apostles had passed down uh, to the bishops and those that had succeeded them. So they wanted to make sure uh, that the, the writings that they were reading lined up with what they had been taught, what had been handed down to them. Uh, And so this is part of how they would determine if the writing was actually apostolic. So when I mentioned at the beginning of the video that someone had forged, uh, had uh, pretended to be me. But if you look, if you've watched my videos and you read the comment that that person made, it doesn't line up with the kind of character that I have. It doesn't sound like me. It doesn't line up with how I I conduct myself. So anyone who knew me well knew that that wouldn't line up. Same way with some of these epistles. Some of these, again, some of these were being forged and they were going under the name of apostles. But they didn't line up with the teaching of the apostles. So it had to also be orthodox. So they used, is the text ancient? Does it go back to the ancient church? Is the text in some way apostolic or associated with apostolic men? Thirdly, is it, is it 
wide in scope? In other words, is it Catholic? Does does the whole church receive it, or is it just a few churches in a narrow geographical area? And fourthly, uh, did it contain teachings that lined up with what had been passed down uh, from the apostles? So using this criteria, uh, very early recognition of some of the books happened. So um, when they were looking and trying to decide what scriptures, what was actually scripture and what was not, it, some of the books were very clear very early on. So you begin to see a pattern emerge that the four Gospels were widely received by just about everybody. You, you can go all the way back to Justin Martyr, and Justin Martyr is referring and, and probably referring to all four of these Gospels as Scripture. Then you go on to Irenaeus. Um, Irenaeus is referring, for, referring to the four Gospels as Scripture. Clement of Alexandria. Uh, um, who else? A uh, Tertullian. I mean, these are some of the earliest writers of the new uh, uh, after the New Testament era that we have. Some of the earliest ones that we have, and they were referring to the four Gospels as Scripture. Not only so, but I told you that very likely Paul or his associates were already collecting some of his writings. You can see very early on that the 13 or 14 epistles of uh, Paul were being early on received. Again, you have a lineup of people like Irenaeus, you have uh, Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria. These are not people who are all clustered up in one geographical area. They're spread out over a large geographical area, and uh, they're all very early, and they're acknowledging a core set of books, uh, the Gospels and Acts. I should have mentioned Acts when I was talking about the Gospels. They're, they're incorporating Acts and the Gospels and the Epistles of Paul. Now, if you know your New Testament, that's the bulk of your New Testament right there. Uh, the four Gospels, um, Acts, and the letters of Paul. Now, there were some um, letters that were disputed, and those are for various reasons, and we'll talk about some of that. So lists began to form about which books would be accepted, which books would be rejected, using some of the same criteria. Now, one of the earliest uh, lists that we have is the Mortorian Fragment. It dates back to about 170 AD. Now, this is what it included. It included the four Gospels, Acts of the Apostles, 13 letters of Paul, Jude, 1st and 2nd John, and Revelation. Now, a books that, um, now, books that we don't recognize now, it included two, Wisdom of Solomon and Revelation of Peter. Uh, so it did include a couple that we wouldn't recognize now, but that's not a pattern that holds. That's sort of an anomaly there that it included those two. Uh, if you move forward to Origen, he has a very similar list, but he does not include the Wisdom of Solomon or the Revelation of Peter, uh, but certainly included the four Gospels, Acts, 13 Letters of Paul, James, 1 Peter, 1 John, and Revelation. That's the bulk of what we use today as well. 